Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 15th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. It was a beautiful, warm, calm, mostly sunny morning, although it quickly began to cloud over and the winds became moderate to strong out of the southwest. And then as the morning went on, we really had some periods of sun and clouds and the winds became stronger from the southwest and then eventually shifted more westerly. We had this huge kettle of broad-winged hawks. Okay, not really. This is just a swarm of insects over by the bluff. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings. So a small falcon that's light overall underneath is an American kestrel. And even early in the morning, the raptors were getting up pretty high. Here we have a raptor with a long tail and long, skinny, somewhat pointed wings. That's kind of brownish and tan overall underneath. This is a northern harrier. Here we have a songbird, and overall we see a raspberry color, and we see a forked tail. This is a male purple finch. Here we have a large swallow that's completely dark underneath, and if the lighting was better, we would see it was kind of a deep blue or purple color, because this is a male purple martin, our largest swallow. And here's our largest woodpecker. This is the pileated or pileated woodpecker, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. And here's our second largest woodpecker, one of around 90 that we saw today. This is a northern flicker, and the variety we have here in the east are the yellow shafted. Here we have a small raptor. We see rounded wingtips rather than pointed, so it's a hawk and not a falcon. We see a long tail where all of the tail feathers seem to be about the same length, and we see a relatively small head. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. By mid-morning, with a bit of sunshine and those strong southwesterly winds, we had a pretty good flight of turkey vultures, although with that wind direction, it tends to send the birds high and out over the lake. And in addition to the turkey vultures, we also had a good variety of other raptors mixed in. For example, here we have an adult bald eagle, and we also had the first decent-sized groups of broad-winged hawks for the day with a few hundred. From the north lookout, I had 56 species. When the wind shifted more westerly, the flight line shifted inland, so we moved down to the south lookout at 11 a.m., and it was mostly sunny when we got there, but the weather changed a lot throughout the afternoon with some cloudier periods, and the wind really became stronger and shifted more to the northwest by the late afternoon with some rain showers in the area that shut the flight down. The non-raptor highlight was this flock of five sandhill cranes. Notice that they're tannish gray overall and have long straight necks and long trailing legs. Here we have a budio with a dark belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk and we see the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail of an adult. And this one's fairly heavily marked with a dark throat, so possibly the northern subspecies. Here we have a small budio. We see somewhat pointed wing tips and we see a black tail with a wide white band to it and some brown barring to the underside of the body. This is an adult broad-winged hawk. Here's a look at another adult broad-winged hawk. Notice that in the glide posture, they have a very straight trailing edge to the wings. Gives them a pretty distinctive shape. And again, you can see that single wide white tail band. Here's one more adult broad-winged hawk, and sometimes in a glide, they'll make their wings even more angular, and it gives a kind of a crook to the wing and a bit more pointed look to the wingtips. Here we have a large corvid that was soaring. We see a large head and bill, and if we look at the tail, it's diamond-shaped because the central tail feathers are quite a bit longer than the outer tail feathers, so nice diamond-shaped to the tail of the common raven. Here we have another red-tailed hawk. This photo was taken towards the sun, so you can't see the detail too well, but you can just make out the belly band and the dark patagial bars. And this bird is carrying some kind of prey, probably a small rodent. Here's a photo from the late afternoon that I took of the dark sky from the rain showers that passed us. And the sun came back out afterwards, but the winds were really strong at that point, so only a few turkey vultures got up and went. From the south lookout, I had 40 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 2,176 turkey vultures, 12 ospreys, 6 bald eagles, 15 northern harriers. We had 52 sharp-shinned hawks and 4 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 1 red-shouldered hawk, 260 broad-winged hawks, our first big broad-winged hawk push of the season, 35 red-tailed hawks, and 1 rough-legged hawk. And for falcons, we had six American kestrels, two merlins, and one peregrine falcon for a falcon trifecta and a grand total of 2,571 migrating raptors. 
Over the past three days, we've had a total of just over 7,000 migrating raptors. The April total is now 15,128, and the season total is 33,431 as we are at exactly the halfway point of the season. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking windy with snow showers in the afternoon and a high of only 39 and winds west-northwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour with stronger gusts. So just because of the strength and direction of that wind, there probably won't be much migration. Maybe some turkey vultures pushing through, but I'd be surprised if we see much beyond that, mostly just due to the strength of the wind. For Thursday, it's looking partly cloudy with a high in the mid-40s and winds west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that'll be a day at the south lookout. And notice it's the same direction as tomorrow with west-northwest winds, but that 10 to 15 miles per hour is more of a sweet spot. And I'm pretty optimistic that we could get a good flight for Thursday. So we'll check in on that again tomorrow, but that could be a big south lookout flight. And for Friday, considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers and a high up near 60. Winds south-southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it's good winds. It's a good direction and a good speed. And we're right in the peak migration time. So it's going to come down to how much is that thick cloud cover and the possibility of some rain going to hold back the flight. I don't know, but I always tell people... Don't underestimate southerly winds during peak migration time. So I wouldn't let the rain scare you off too much. There's a chance it might be a dud, but I'm really keeping an eye on Friday as a possible big day. And it's kind of fitting that it is now the halfway point of the season because today felt like a transitional day with that first big push of a few hundred broadwinged hawks. Before today, we had only had nine broadwings with seven of those coming yesterday. So with getting a few hundred broadwings today, we're definitely now in the period where thousands of broadwings are possible in a day. And over the next week or two, anytime we have a good wind, we could be getting large numbers of broad-winged hawks and many other species as well. It's peak time for a lot of different species, but it definitely feels like we've ended the first half of the season, which is the part without broadwings. And now we're into the broad-winged part of the season where we can get excellent flights like we've been getting, but on top of it, you also get several thousand broad-winged hawks. So really exciting and busy time of the season coming up these next few weeks. And then especially as we get into May, when all of the colorful warblers and other songbirds are starting to come back. So lots of good birding ahead for the second half of the season here at Derby Hill. Hope to see you soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.